The pandemic has thrown millions out of work and deflated entire industries, but not the residential real estate market. A year ago, it was humming. Today, in the teeth of the pandemic, it's roaring. Some buyers need housing for a brand new reason. After spending months in virtual lockdown, they learn the residents just to serve their needs, or more accurately, this, the needs of a family in quarantine. There's been a little bit of change in the source of areas people are wanting to move to and live. Search activity in rural and small town has been stronger and has struggled a little bit in the urban areas. Architects are also seeing a huge boom in demand and for home-based amenities. Homeowners are looking at their abouts with the new eyes. They are desperately searching for an underused space to carve out an office or some place to get away. That can include everything from garages to particularly spacious walk-in closets. Another indoor space that's getting more attention is the kitchen. Even though this is traditionally one of the most expensive home improvements with the least payoff um, when you sell your house, but these days, with more people making more meals at home, that equation has changed. The pandemic has also changed how people perceive their yards, not just something to mow, but a substitute for public parks and pools, which is why we elaborate trick out porches, decks, and patios being big, as well as more elaborate landscaping. All these pandemic-related improvements could fade in importance if life returns to normal or something approximating normal in the coming year. Let's talk unemployment. The graphic on purple is 2020. You can see that back in February 2020, the unemployment rate was at 3.5%. Back in April, at 14.7, and in August came down to 8.4%. The interesting comparison with the green graphic that takes us back to a 5% of unemployment in 2007, about a 10% of unemployment in 2009, and a 7.5% in 2013. So you can see related in situation in both graphics. Now here we see the unemployment and housing by age. 3% of the home sales was done by 24 years old or younger, and they have a 14.1% of unemployment. Between 25 and 34 years old, they have an unemployment rate at 9.7% and 25% of the annual home purchase. And lastly, a 35 plus have a 6.8% of unemployment with a 72% of the annual home purchase. Prapa chun chun gan chun ramachun. I feel sellers come closer so I can feel your energy, but not too close. We need to keep social distance. This is the time for you to sell your property. Call Fernanda Smith with from Keller Williams and she will assist you through the entire process. Ramachun, chungan chun, pramachun. Orlando Housing Market in July saw a surge in buyers' activity that tipped home sales into the black. After three months of precipitous declines caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, 
reports the Orlando Regional Realtors Association. The median price of homes sold in Orlando continued on its upward path, while inventory fell to its lowest levels this year. Let's talk about the numbers. The steep pause in closing activity during April, May, and June created a transaction surge in July that was actually 1% greater than in July of last year. The overall median price of Orlando homes, all types combined, sold in July is $270,000, which is 9.2% above the July 2019 median price of $247,250 and 1.9% above the June 2020 median price of $265,000. The median price for a single family homes that changed hands in July increased 10.1% over July 2019 and is now $295,000. The median price for condos increased 5.1% to $145,000, and townhomes, villas, duplexes increased 4.6% to $224,900. Members of Aura participated in 3,679 sales of all homes types combined. In July, which it was 1.4% more than the 3,628 sales in July 2019, and 18.6% more than the 3,103 sales in June 2020. Sales of the single homes, homes, foreclosures, and short sales reached 79 in July, and they are at 27.5% less than the 190 stress sales back in July 2019. These stress sales made up to 2.2% of all Orlando area transactions last month. A lot of people thought that during the pandemic, there will be lots of short sales or even bank owned properties available. They were expecting to be like 2008, 2009. Now, keep in mind that then nobody had equity in their homes, which is not the case on today's market. So even though there will be some people affected by because of the loss of the jobs, because of the loan for variance, they may be able not to come up with the payments at the end of that process. Um, they still may be able to sell their homes at the current bar market value and get a profit out of that. So keep that in mind. June Kuliman June buyers, I can see you. This is the time for you to buy. Very low interest rates. Oh my God. If you don't use this opportunity, when? So you can pay higher mortgage interest rates. Just call Fernanda Smith from Keller Williams and she will assist you through the entire buying process. Barracachum, chunganchum, rumanchum. interest rate paid by Orlando home buyers in July was 2.97%, down from 3.04% the month prior. This is amazing. It's like having almost free money. The overall inventory of homes 
that they were available for purchase in July is 6,220, represents a decrease of 22.2% when compared to July 2019, and a 5.1% decrease compared to last month. So what's next? Housing markets in a K-shaped recovery. The owner-occupied market will continue to see a strong demand. Low interest rates, income from earners and income wages, typically of homeowners, remain stable. Sales may be limited by low inventory, potential stumbling blocks in the investment market. Renters begin to struggle leading to miss rent due to high unemployment in service and retail industries. And this could push rents down. Loss of a cash flow could lead to more rental properties going up for sale and potential shift from income to owner-occupied properties. Institutional investors may move in and concentrate rental market further. Now we look into an stage two, the housing markets in a more traditional recovery. We likely see negative impacts on other parts of the economy and the recovery will be slow. The pandemic is a very unique situation and timing on its resolution is very uncertain. Recovery in the meantime is slow and the impacts of our lower consumer spending will cause unemployment to rise in industries currently doing better than average. There is also demand for purchasing homes will slow when demographic groups typical of home ownerships begin to be negatively impacted. Prices are likely to continue to grow as a result of low inventory and low mortgage rates. Then demand will begin to recover as unemployment recovers across the economy. The impetus from this will likely be resolution of the pandemic through a vaccine. Here are the risks from forbearances. The forbearance system gave a maximum forbearance period of 12 months. The system works under the assumption that within 12 months, most borrowers will have regained employment and be eligible for restructuring. If we get to second quarter of 2021 and the number of loans in forbearance remains high, we are likely to see negative consequences. We may see homes begin moving onto the market as we close in on the deadlines and owners realize they won't be able to restructure. We could also see foreclosures increase as we move into April 2021. What would it make a difference? Something that makes things closer to normal before we get a vaccine. Uh, In-home rapid testing can be done daily is being evaluated. Widespread organized contact tracing, improved treatment protocols, anything else that would give people confidence that can avoid infection in public areas. Getting a, max, a vaccine much sooner than expected will bring changes on the expectations about the timing of the recovery and would allow for more investments sooner. Business can start hiring sooner as vaccine increases numbers of people who are active in public areas. The real estate market keeps on moving by supply and demand, and we are still on a seller's market. But again, for buyers, it's also a great time to buy due to the unprecedented low interest rates. I hope this real estate market update was informative and if you are in need of an Orlando Realtor, please contact me so I can assist you whether you are a buyer or a seller, local or international. I am Fernanda Smith, Realtor with Keller Williams. Until next time. 
Thank you so much.